Welcome aboard CCO's The Science of Fishing, your one-stop destination in the ever-evolving world of fishing. Here, stay ahead with our latest reports and innovative tactics, all tailored to help you land the catch of the day, every day. Each episode dives into seasoned anglers' insights and the top-tier products they use to prepare you to make every fishing trip a success story. A big shout out to our generous sponsors, Gulfstream Lures, Tackle Crafters, and Black Reef Spear Fishing for making this podcast possible. And now, let's cast off into our angling adventure. Introducing your trusty guide and host, Mark Farag. What's going on, everybody? Mark here with Center Consoles Only, the science of fishing. I'm here with Johnny Jigs today. Welcome, Johnny. Welcome Thank to the you. studio, Thank man. Thank you. Absolutely. So, guys, today we're going to talk about slow pitch jigging. We're going to talk about all that you need for slow pitch jigging from the rods, the reels, the tackle that you need. And we're going to talk about some of Johnny's most recent trips from Louisiana, San Diego, down to Keys and Pulley Ridge and all the good stuff that he does. So, Johnny, what's going on, man? How you been lately? I've been great. Yeah, good. Things are good. Good, Jigging man. world is good. Jigging's taken off all over the United States and it's been um, um, just a... a amazing adventure a lot of big stuff happening with uh johnny jigs right now actually that's awesome man tell me a little bit about that what do you guys got rolling i know some uh florida sport fishing magazine stuff right that's right that was pretty cool so they they gave me the um cover of florida sport fishing magazine i think it was um june may and june edition so from growing up as a kid in south florida reading that magazine my entire you know, life, basically my whole fishing career to be uh, on the cover of the magazine. That was very special for me and to send a copy to my dad really was, you know, really cool for him to see that. But uh, so, yeah, we've partnered up with them um, in some some aspects. I actually wrote an article for that magazine on okay. deep drop jigging, um, um, very detailed into the, the science of deep drop, slow pitch jigging. Um, and then also, you know, they carry some of our jigs. So we've put together some really cool um, packs for them to, to sell and you get it at a uh, better price than you can actually get it from Johnny Jigs. So it's a good deal. <laughs> it's a good deal all the way around for everybody. That's um, awesome, man. That's but, awesome. But, so yeah, man. So jigging's taken off a little bit. So not a lot of people know about slow pitch jigging, right? Everybody knows you fast vertical jig or the regular fishing. So what's up with slow pitch jigging? What is it exactly for someone that doesn't know? The thing about, so for high speed vertical jigging, right. very effective, right? Very effective for pelagic fish, but very exhausting. And granted, there are some, some, you know, warriors out there that can do it all day long. I don't know how I have ripped that jig from the bottom to the top a couple of times and I'm done. Right. And yeah. high speed jigging is a fleeing uh, bait fish, right? So it's something moving fast. A lot of predators will chase something moving fast. Slow pitch jigging is exactly like it's um, um, worded. You slow it down. So now you lift this metal and you allow it to fall slowly. And it looks like it's a um, injured bait fish. So you got to think about the risk versus reward whenever um, a predator is going after a fish. So for an injured bait fish, you know, if it's in front of their face, they're just going to eat it, right? It's right. just too easy. Yeah. So, sometimes I really even think like, it's more annoying them than anything, right? Like, cause you keep flicking this thing up and it's just kind of fluttering in front of, in front so of them and just out of spite, they're going to hit it, you know? Yeah. You think you get a lot of reaction bites as opposed to like a chase? Yes. It's, it's a lot of reactions, but, but the neat thing about slow pitch, um, versus high speed is that you can do both, right? So you can, you can high speed a J, um, with your slow pitch outfit. And so we'll do that a lot of times, actually just recently when I was in, um, um, Louisiana and I'll tell you a little bit about that story later, but, but, um, I was trying to do a, a, um, tutorial on, on technique, um, for the camera. And so a lot of times I'll let the jig hit the bottom. As soon as it taps bottom, I give it a couple high speeds right off the bottom. That's my first move a lot of times and it, it attracts attention. But the first time it hit the bottom, I rip it and then boom, I get hit. Really? And I'm like, okay, we're going to go back into this, you know? after I get this fish in. So we, we eventually, we essentially start filming again after I get that fish in. I'm like, okay yeah. guys, let me explain it to you guys again. Since I get hooked up on the first one, <laughs> I tap bottom, I rip it and boom, I get hit again. So, yeah. so you can, you can do that fast 
high speed with the slow pitch and then slow it down. So you've, you could, it's a little bit more of a diverse way of, of jigging right. with the slow pitch. It's more of a finesse kind of. It's a finesse. That's yeah. cool. Man. There is a finesse. There's an art to it. Yeah, but, absolutely. But I mean, anybody can do it. You really? Know, any, anybody, anybody can do it. As long as you got two arms and you can jig yeah, a rod that's you're it. good that's it yep and okay. you and you don't need all the um special gear to i was do gonna it. ask you about that but what do you need but you'll be more effective okay w- with the right gear you know and I, I can always i hear my dad every time i say that you know you need the right tool for the job son you know and yeah. it's like so you're not gonna cut down a tree with a with a handsaw you know a big tree with a handsaw like you gotta have the right tool for the job and the fact of the matter is people look at our our rods our slow pitch rods and they're like well why do you need these little tiny rods why can't you go with something stout because the, the fact of the matter is this you're jigging all day Right. And it can be tiresome, right? Because right. you're actively fishing. You're not soaking a bait and thumbing a spool or, or you're got, you know, um, a live bait just on the on the bait runner or something. You're actively jigging. So the lighter you can go with your gear, the longer that you can stay in the strike zone right. with, with the gear. So so that's why we use the rods. And then the second purpose of these light rods is that if you look at the action of them, if you could see a video of, of um, someone jigging, you can go to our, our, our YouTube channel, Johnny Jigs uh, TV, and see the action of these rods and how they slowly unload. It does a couple of things. It, it imparts an action on the lure that looks like it's wounded. It slows it down, right? Even though you can yeah. go fast, it slows it down. So so there's two, two things to that. It's the fact that it's light, and then also the fact that it, it imparts a better action on the lure. That so. makes sense. So then what you, you're definitely using different reels then. You're not using the same, you know, like big conventional. Right. Right. So so you wanna you want a narrow spool when it comes to slow pitch shooting because How come? whenever if you have a wide spool, then you're 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 not able to grip the the reel and the rod at the same time. Right. So the reel becomes a part of your handle and your control as you're working the jig, as you're working the rod um, and the reel. So you want to be able to grip it. If you have a wide spool, your hand turns you know, sideways and you can't really get a proper grip on it. So for me, I want it to be comfortable. Right. So right. there's a few reels that I that I, I really like to use. Um, um, one being the most comfortable for me and is the accurate Valiant 500N. I really enjoy that because it, it fits nicely in my hand. Um, the other one is I use a Daiwa Saltiga 35JH. And those are like the, the middle class of reels that I use. But I'm looking for um, a lot of times on from, I would say, 500 feet and less. I like a high speed retrieval because whenever I turn that handle, I can actually put better action on the jig. Mm-hmm. And then the next thing is I would recommend something with a high speed retrieval for, for guys just starting because it helps them to put movement on the jig. That's the right. biggest, I think that's the biggest um, thing that guys get wrong their first time on the water slope is shooting is that they're not um, putting action on the jig. And then second thing is they leave tension on the line. They're not allowing the jig to fall and flutter and do what it's designed to do. So, so a high speed reel is definitely the way to go, um, for deep dropping, which gets a lot more technical. Um, is that like 500 plus 500 plus? Yeah. Um, the deepest I've jigged is, um, 1400 feet, um, manually, Um, non electric. Not they make electric. some electrics though, right? They do. Yes. Do you so, like them or no? I do. Okay. <laughs> I do. So there, I'm not a purist, right? There's right. guys that are purists and they want to stick to the, you know, traditional way of slow pitch. And I can teach you traditional way of slow pitch all day long. I understand slow pitch jigging, you know, but at the end of the day, for me, I like to catch fish. Right. And when I, by any means necessary. Yeah. You know, that's my thing. Electric right? or not. <laughs> so um Daiwa does make a um 300 j um, which is a microelectric reel, which works perfect for for deep dropping. Okay. And so we go out with these little um lithium battery packs that are like on a satchel on our mm-hmm. side you plug it in so you're mobile you can move all the way around the boat that battery will last you for two days you'll never wow. run out of battery. you could charge your cell phone at the same time <laughs> and you still won't run out of battery That's right awesome. but um the microelectrics are are definitely coming um um into play now they're not available in 
um, the U.S. market. They're okay. only available Japanese domestic market. So we import them from Japan um, on our website, johnnyjigs.com. Um, one thing I can tell you, though, they're coming. So okay. I, I've got some inside information from Daiwa. It's going to happen. We're going to have them here. And not only that, we're going to have a U.S. model that's made for um, us uh, Barney Rubbles who are rough really? on our stuff. You know, a little yeah. bit a little bit hardier of, of a deal um, is what they're going to bring in. So those microelectrics are so weak. Yeah. yeah. They well, probably save your arm a bunch, right? Yeah. Well, if you're if you're on like a long range trip where you're actually deep dropping for two days straight. Yeah. It, I mean, I've done it and I'm in decent shape, you yeah. know, but it is still brutal. So at I'm some sure. point in time, you just want to push the button yeah, I uh, bet. and guys give, guys give me, guys give me a hard time on, on, you know, our social media on our YouTube channel, stuff like that. And they tell me, Oh, you know, why don't you go home and play Xbox? But <laughs> it's like, all right, dude, I want to see you out there doing this yeah. with me. You know, I guarantee you all, I can probably go longer than you, but eventually <laughs> you're going to quit and I'm going to catch more fish than you with my electric. Right. You know? hundred uh, percent. So you're talking about those long range trips. Where have you been recently? Recently, I did a long range trip out of San Diego okay. in May. That's pretty interesting. Um, What'd you guys do? Bluefin? We were looking for bluefin. Okay. Yep. And, and how'd that go? It's that's a tough. It's a tough place for us to go to, right? Yeah. It's, so, California is just kind of catch it on to the slow pitch jigging game, and then whenever you know we're we're like we're trying to take it to the next level. So we're looking for those beast triple digit fish yeah. on light gear. So when you get on a boat with a, a seasoned captain and crew that have been doing it one way forever, yeah, they don't like you. You piss some right? people off. They don't like you, you right? <laughs> they, they, they think that you're going to cause problems yeah. and, and, and I get it, you know, I get it. And, yeah. and the thing is, is that when you're, when you're going for triple digit fish, on light gear, you don't want to, um, you don't want to keep the boat waiting, right? If they're right. off the fish and you're still fighting a fish, you want to keep it moving. But we were confident in our gear getting on the boat. And, yeah. um, we actually fished the 800 narrow that accurate, um, outfitted for us, um, just for Johnny jigs oh, wow. with an SPJ handle two speed. So okay. we, we were rocking. You were ripping them in, man. Dude, we were rocking them in. Was the crew like just astounded? Yes. <laughs> yes. So so we limited out, right? Really? What was your biggest? Complete, my, my biggest was just in the triple digits at 100 pounds. Okay. Will Crane from my crew caught like 150 pounder wow. um, on our SJ Railer slow pitch rods. So we All made, slow pitch jigs. So we made this, we made this, we did San Diego last year, okay. right? And we, we were like, okay we need to do something a little bit different with the rod, right? So it's right. not your traditional slow pitch rod in the sense that that it's like six foot two, six foot three, or six six. A lot of slow pitch rods are in that range. Right. We made this one, it's like it's it's almost eight foot. Wow. Right. So you can get out past the boat because these these bluefin tunas do this long death roll. Yeah. And you want to make sure you're not hitting the hole. Then we also took the butt section of it to where you can lay it on the on the rail if you needed to. Because okay. these fish are incredibly powerful. Yeah. So this trip we took that rod out there. <laughs> And they still laughed at our rods. You really? know, uh, we've heard everything: trout <laughs> rod, Toys R Us rod, Barbie <laughs> rod, everything you can think of. Yeah. And we crushed them, dude. So did you guys outdo pretty much everybody? We we hung in. There's some good anglers on the boat. You right. Know, there's guys. There's the regulars that that are there all the time. Yeah. We're right there with them. Really. Uh, right there with them. so they were probably shook too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it, it's cool, man. It's, yeah. And and you know what. We, we get on generally we get on the boat and and people are doubting us and they make fun of it. it's in good fun we take yeah, it in yeah, strides you know i like it and then motivation we, we let our rods do the talking for us you right. know and 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 almost every time you know yeah. it pays off so how many fish did you end up with that trip um i got four bluefin tunas okay. and we were we were maxed out really so these, how many of guys were with you we were catching um there was it was will chris Bob and myself, you um, all limited out. Well, we couldn't limit out because we were catching such big bluefin that yeah. we filled the the 
the tanks on the boat. They really? Couldn't, they couldn't put it anymore. Oh, wow. So something interesting about, about um, those boats out of San Diego. I mean, they've, they've got just this incredible fleet of long-range boats, and there's a yeah. bunch of them, you know, and they're beautiful boats. And their storage. So here in South Florida, right, we're thinking ice. We got our big ice boxes. We throw the fish yeah. in there. They're on ice. For them, the water's so cool in the Pacific that they actually have tanks where they just pump fresh water in there. So the fish just That's go it? in the tanks in the, yeah, in the hole, wow. which is, yeah, pretty interesting. How's the meat after that? It's perfect. Really? It's perfect. Yep. How many days were you guys out there? Four days. And the meat was good. After meat was good. Wow. Meat was good. So it's kind of a trek to get it back to Florida. Like we, we can't keep all of the fish yeah. that we catch, but, but there's anglers that are, you know, very more than willing to to take yeah. whatever fish we don't take, but right. you end up. Um, they have these processing uh, facilities there that they um, um, in, in an incredible like amount of time, like within like an hour, they literally have your stuff vacuum sealed in a cooler, uh, like a um, styrofoam cooler inside a box with airplane safety sticker on it and you oh, wow. check it in just like anything else that's awesome yeah so you got to bring some home we brought some home that's yeah. awesome yeah. man yeah you guys were also recently in louisiana right yes what happened over there <laughs> sounds like there's some cool stories from that louisiana trip. it's man we went out with this captain um um jerry menard okay and, Great captain, man. And he, yeah. he put us on some fish. We, we just, what were you targeting? We were going out for snapper and grouper. Okay. That's exactly what we wanted. You know, yeah. that's my, that's my, that's my favorite, you know, yeah. but, um, the first day going out, we get about halfway to our 120 mile distance. So 60 miles out Yeah. engine breaks down. Oh no. Right. <laughs> this is great. <laughs> this is crazy. Right, so the engine breaks down. We find out later that it was just an oil filter split and the oil spewed out oh, um, into the cowling and um, but broke down. And then the second engine was was just, it, it wasn't able to keep up to, yeah. to get us back in. We're on a big aluminum hull um, boat. And so we, he starts, he's got a sat phone. He's calling people. Um, he's got his uncle um, back on land that's getting on the phone. You know, we're communicating with Coast Guard, with um, uh, Louisiana Game Wardens and whatnot. Yeah. And so Louisiana Game Warden comes out, right? We haven't dropped a lure. 60 miles to you guys? 60 miles to us, yeah. right? We haven't dropped the lure, right? Yeah. Like, it, this is a long trek. I'm talking about it. Flights to Louisiana, hotels, rental cars, yeah. all the gear. You get out there and it's like, oh, right? We <laughs> yeah. break down. I get it. Typical boat stuff, right? right. But the, the the Louisiana game warden comes out to where we're at and they're like, all right, guys, just uh, set this boat adrift and uh, get in here with us. But brand new boat. What? Brand new boat, dude. On the game warden's boat? He said they told us to just let that boat go adrift get onto their boat and they're going to take us in. They're in the business of saving lives, not boats. Right. Interesting. <laughs> Just let the boat go. Yeah. No one on it. So this is, this is, it's an aluminum hole, um, neural Walker boat. It's, it's one of, uh, it's the first one made. It's, it's kind of like an invincible, um, 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 what's the word? What's not, not a mono hole, but the a, cat, a, hole? cat, cat hole. Yeah. Right. And, um, brand new boat, brand new engines. Everything's brand new, brand new gear on yeah. it. And the captain's like, you guys go, I'm staying. <laughs> right. Yeah. So, so we all have this, you know, bro moment. We're like, cap, you stay, we're staying. Right. Yeah. So I started asking the, the game warden. I'm like, guys, what happens if you just leave us out here and uh, we don't make it? <laughs> right. <laughs> right? So, yeah. You know, like what, what could possibly happen? What if our communication dies and we're just stuck out here forever? And then, yeah. and, but I look at like, this was, this was the, the, um, this was the, the, the thing I looked at their boat and I realized that they had tow every, everything to tow a boat on their boat they have the big cleat and everything that right. that they were set up for towing boats yeah and so i'm like what about all that you know tow stuff that you guys have over there yeah and then eventually they 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 decided to tow us in so why didn't they want that in the first place i don't know i, I couldn't <laughs> tell you all i know is that so for the next 11 hours at six miles an hour we were a giant trolling lure back into louisiana oh my goodness yep and um um 
we get in and on our way back to the hotel, we get stopped by the police at three in the morning. And they're like, I'm like dizzy, you know, and like, <laughs> yeah. then they think I'm drunk or You're something. You're delirious. I'm just delirious at this yeah. point, you know, and luckily one of the guys was a, a, a fisherman. He recognized us from Johnny Jigs and, right. and he was like, wait, I know you guys. And yeah. I'm like, yeah, we want to go to our hotel, please. <laughs> yeah. I just want to get home. <laughs> yeah. But, um, yeah. so we, we, um, Fix the boat the following day. We pushed back all our flights. We pushed back everything. And then we yeah. went out to this spot that Captain Jerry Menard has out there in Louisiana. And let me tell you, it is incredible. Really? In the first six drops, Chris Doyle caught six scamp groupers. Wow. One after another, after another. I was getting very pissed off at that point. <laughs> but I caught a couple um, American red snappers in between his scamp groupers. And, yeah. I, and then I... I and this is this is a tr this is a little nugget you guys cannot take home with you. I looked at his jig. I'm like, what are you using? You know, because sometimes they key into an action, a color, yeah. and it's like if you're fishing with your buddies, you know, it's good to work as a team. If you have the same jig that your buddy keeps catching fish on, yeah. don't hesitate, switch it out, switch it out. You know, if I didn't catch those yeah. two American Reds in between, I would have switched out way earlier. Yeah. But I was pretty happy with those. And, um, and then uh, I switched it out and started catching scam group. Really? Yeah. So they were honed in on that one color. They were honed in on that one or that color. that action or whatever yep. it is. Yep. Yeah. The one color. Um, and Will, Will caught a very nice, um, yellow edge grouper, nice. which, you know, just all scam grouper is probably my number one. Yellow edge is probably my number two of, yeah. of fish to eat. But, um, so that trip, it turned, you know what I mean? It was an adventure. Yeah. It's always an adventure. Like you don't have to, you know. The bite was on that day. The bite, God, the bite was on. Yeah, that's <laughs> it. I, I feel like he took us out to just an area that's that's um untouched, you know. Yeah. And it's is yeah. it popular to slow pitch out there in Louisiana? It's catching on. Okay. It's catching on. So so there's I want to say we have about four or five stores that stock um our product in Louisiana. Yeah. Um, I can tell you that we send a ton of stuff, you know, via um, um mail to yeah. them a lot of orders online so i think it's catching on guys are interested you know right. and it's 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 catching on everywhere you know and yeah why shouldn't it, it catches fish right it catches fish so it works easy. it works people say people say that you know oh this is this is a fad it's gonna fade and that to me that's like saying like trolling is a fad it's a, it's gonna fade if it catches fish yeah how is it gonna fade right it doesn't it's make not, sense. It's not going to fade. No, it's, it's just going to catch on. It can evolve. Right. You know, just like guys went from trolling to high speed trolling to planer trolling. It right. can evolve. You right. know, I, I get that. But to fade and, and be gone, never. Well, never. How have you seen it evolve over time? So you've probably seen it from inception to where it's at now. Yeah. You know, there was there was a handful of guys that were doing it here in the States before me. Um, Benny Ortiz being one. Um, Brian Dietz. Um, a guy named Ray, I can't remember his last name. Um, there was, there was a handful of guys that were doing it. And that's whenever I, like shortly after them, I learned. And when I came back from, from a long range trip where I learned about slow pitch jigging, um, I went into my local tackle shop and I'm like, just like, as a matter of fact, like, like, this is like a thing, you know what I mean? I'm like, I would like to get some slow pitch jigging gear. And they were like, what, well, what is that? <laughs> yeah. <they're> like, what? <laughs> so, that, that's, that's, you know, that was like an aha moment for me. I'm like, holy cow, we're doing something that nobody's doing. Right. You know, which is, which is cool. Right. And Different like, niche. Everybody wants to do something, you know, new and, and exciting, you know? Yeah. And I was excited about the fact that I've like, you know, it's, it's, quick easy clean way to get out on the water and catch fish without bait you don't have to cut bait or anything like that right. you know it's super clean you know i always have bait i never run yeah. out of bait you it's know? always there i never run out of bait so so it's how it's changed um is it's becoming it is becoming popular it's, and you know it's been popular in in japan since the 90s you know they're into micro jigging now like they're yeah. they're they're doing all kinds of different stuff so um here in the states like Guys are guys are really adding it to their their quiver. You know, it's yeah. it's just another tool for them to catch fish. And right. I can tell you, so for me, I I only slow pitch jig whenever I go on these long range trips. I pretty yeah. much only slow pitch jig. Doesn't mean I don't know how to bait fish. I know yeah. how to bait fish. I did it for many years. I enjoy it. I love it. But people take pictures of me now and stuff like that and yeah, give yeah. me a hard time. So so I like to slow pitch jig. Right. But the guys that are diverse. 
right? That can switch from um, bait right. to the jig and quickly and recognize that, that the bite is changing from bait to jig or, or vice versa. Those are the guys that crush it, right? right? So, so is it the end all of fishing, slow fishing? Absolutely not. You know, it's, it's a tool in your arsenal. That's it. It's just a tool in your arsenal. Right. That's fun. You know, yeah. and active, active fishing, you know, yeah. very, very active. So on those long range trips you're talking about down in the keys, right? How many guys would you say are bait fishing versus slow pitching? Is it majority slow pitch guys now? Um, I'd say, I'd say it's 50, 50. Really? Yeah. But a lot of guys are, are doing exactly what I said. They're switching right. back, back and, and forth. forth. They're going back and forth, you know, and, um, there, there is trips where, where, you know, you'll see more of one or the other. Yeah. Um, I think I get a little bit of a skewed version of it because whenever we go now, it's like a Johnny Jigs private charter. Yeah. So guys are coming out, you know, on a jigging trip, you yeah. know, but I encourage them, please bring bait. Bring right. bait, you know, draw the fish in so I can catch yeah. them on my jig. <laughs> yeah. yeah, man. Do you ever, like when you're out there, do you ever troll for Wahoo? Because I know that's a big thing. You I ever do. Bring, you bring your trolling setup? <laughs> here's Johnny Jigs is right. trolling, baby. Here, here's, a, here's a level of honesty, right? All right. So, so I've got this beautiful Tiagra, right, two-speed. Yeah. I've got this um, um, Daiwa Seaboard trolling rod with the Winthrop uh, bent butt. It's a it's a it's a beast. It's an incredible setup, right? The the Daiwa rod, I met the engineer who designed it. He signed it for me, you know. Wow. So it's yeah, it's that's it's, epic. It's a cool setup, right? And yeah. I bring it every time and then I never put it out. <laughs> <laughs> why not because i want to save my jigging muscles <laughs> that makes sense that makes sense but but man on those long range trips it's it's worth it to put it out because yeah. because i've seen uh i saw a 90 pound wahoo caught on one of those trips but there's always a wahoo Real. always a wahoo comes yeah. on the troll you know once in a while you get a barracuda and a black fin tuna and you're a little disappointed that yeah. you had to reel that in but the wahoo fishing out um pulley ridge and beyond is incredible wow but, dude i want to get out there sometime man it's it sounds awesome i've watched a bunch of your videos and you caught a kitty mitchell right yes that's what made that's the one. cover of florida sport fishing Magazine. that's the one yep so dude, that's that awesome. was on the american patriot which i'm leaving um um on thursday to go out okay on. so that's our our next adventure but yeah. um, the kitty that kitty mitchell was that was a, a real real treat for me yeah because when i started um, fishing it was a lot of my offshore stuff was taught to me by my uncle steve yeah. and we went on a, a long range trip where he was kind of showing me the ropes of of these these trips and yeah. we crushed we had a great trip right yeah we, we had filled the cords with mutton snappers and i've got these huge mutton snappers almost world records you know they're monsters Whoa. you know 22 pounds and you know up just just Big patties balls. right yeah and, but my uncle caught a Kitty Mitchell, a little Kitty Mitchell. And so we do the, you know, back in the day, you get out your old camera and you do a spread, you know, and you hold up your fish. And I'm like, uncle, yeah. why are you holding this Kitty Mitchell? <laughs> and he's like, yeah, you may never catch one of these in your life. And I'm really? like, really? They're that rare. You know, they were rare. But this this captain on the American Patriots kind of got him dialed he in. He got the spot. He's got a spot. But, but You're he, only allowed one he's boat, got, right? I think it's two to a trip. I right? think I think it's two, but but he's he's got a spot for him. But I don't know anybody else who does. So yeah, so it still stands true. You may only get yeah. one of them. That's awesome, man. Yeah, so that was cool. a special special fish for me. Yeah. Any other memorable fish that you've had? You know, anything super cool that stands out to you? Hey, you know what? I think my first wahoo. You know, it was years ago. Yeah. Um, that one stands out because it was, it was, it was on the jig. Sure. But we've since caught quite a few of them actually on the really? jig. Um, but another one that really stands out is I got a sailfish on the jig and really? that was cool. So Wahoo are fast, sailfish are faster, yeah. right? So I was, I was on the bow of the boat and I was just reeling up my jig. I wasn't doing anything, you know, spectacular, yeah. but he hit it full speed and it, it was incredible. Incredible. What'd you think it was? Oh, a rocket. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I hooked a, yeah. a rocket. That's it. it just took off. So, yeah. So, so I mean, it wow. was first guess Wahoo, second guess 
not even a guess. He jumped out of the water and I'm like sailfish. Wow. Right. Yeah, and man. That was pretty incredible. So we were, and we actually, um, that was a catch and release. The sailfish, uh, made it, but, um, they're not common, right. To catch them on the, not the jig. on the jig, but I've seen a few of them, really? you know, but my, obviously my numbers are skewed because I'm, yeah. I'm always jigging. So, right. so to catch one on a jig, that's pretty cool. Yeah. That's epic, man. You know? Um, but another epic fish is that I'm, I'm, this is something that I'm, I'm working on is, is really targeting swordfish. Yeah. I was going to ask you about that. There was recently one caught, right? In like 900 feet. Yes. Yeah. Keeper, right? Keeper. First side. keeper in the U S that's, that is from our knowledge of yeah. what we know, the first one that is of legal size that was wow. caught in the U S. Um, um, a guy named Zach Lawrence caught it and um um he's got to be the luckiest guy on planet earth <laughs> you know and he he's such a devoted angler he's a he's a yeah. good angler don't get me wrong he's a good angler you know um but but he was in a hurry and the way he had his gear set up you know yeah. it was just just crazy but so one thing cool f- for me about that fish is number one it was the first one that we know of, of of legal size it was about 150 pounds caught in the united states right the second thing is it was caught on our johnny jigs one drop jig there you go for me that's cool because i designed that jig mm-hmm. from start to finish you know all the way all the way to production i you know i i managed that one from 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 the beginning until it was you know in packaging and yeah. i fished it more than anybody mm-hmm. as well and it's it's a really good jig and yeah. the fact that he got the swordfish on that was awesome that's epic yeah man. But Zach Lawrence had a, a uni to uni connection from his braid to his fluorocarbon, which is is that like sacrilegious? In yes, the, uh, yes, slow pitch yes. World? <laughs> yeah. So I mean, you wanna you wanna go either um, FG or you wanna go PR knot for a few reasons because well they're they're incredible knots, but also they're very streamlined, right? So we're right. using small guides um, is probably an understatement micro guides yeah. um on these on these rods so you want that connection to be able to slide in and out of your guides right. and then also you want to have um, um a good connection you know you want to have a good knot tied and and i have experimented with knots we have broke so many knots we've done it on <laughs> youtube videos we've done it just for fun yeah. just to see what's what's the best because i want to know what's the best of course you know and and the uni to uni um does not um even come close to, to the PR <laughs> yeah. or the FG knot. And actually what, if you guys want to know what the, what the top knot, um, is from foro to braid connection, it's the PR knot. Okay. And I have broken it over and over again. I've showed video proof. And every time that I do it, somebody tells me, well, you got to serve the knot and you got to wrap this 20 times and yeah. this and that. And the fact of the matter is no matter which way I twist it, turn it, pull it, the, the PR knot is better than the FG knot. And I will yeah. stand firm on, on my convictions on that because, right. because I have proved it <laughs> over and over again, Yeah, but it's a hundred percent knot. So, so we use right. the PR knots. Um, but, okay. uh, but Zach, yeah, Zach, Zach Lawrence, man, caught a, he beat me to it. 150 pounder. I would say we, Roughly. it was a guess on, on the weight. Yeah. Um, um, there is some, uh, pictures up on our, our social media, Instagram and stuff like that. You guys can see all the guys holding it, but it, it's definitely looks 150 pounds. They didn't actually officially weigh right. the fish, you know? So, so we got to guess that, that it's sure. 150 pounds. I wish they did. Where did he catch it out of? He was out of, uh, Fort Lauderdale. Really? Yeah. Fort Lauderdale. Yeah. Wow. Yep. So, okay. so not that's nothing crazy so all right here. Zach loves, he loves catching golden tile fish. Yeah. So that's what he was looking for. So um, he caught him in those grounds. He caught him in the gold. Right. Lost a lost swordfish. Can I ask what color the jig was? For it, those guys now that red. want to get out there? It red. was red. So it's, it's okay. an orange, orange and red, uh, one drop, uh, 520. Okay. So the one drop comes in, um, um, hundred, hundred gram, different intervals starting at 120 all the way up to 520 so it was the 520 so if you're going to go deep dropping you need a heavier jig yeah right so that jig will get down for you you could touch bottom mm-hmm. and and the old saying is if you could feel bottom yeah. you got a chance okay right yeah otherwise you're just flapping in the wind yeah right? you, you don't know what's know. going you don't know what's going on <laughs> yeah. right if you're targeting bottom fish you want to be on the bottom right right but, so guys that want to get out there um how would you recommend a beginner get into slow pitch? You know, long range trip, take a local charter. Like, what do you recommend? And should they, you know, they got to come into the shop to get their gear, right? So 
Right. What do you recommend for a guy starting out that wants to get into it? I mean, a long range trip, that's, that's a baptism by fire right there. Really? Right? It's but tough. I, no, no, it's, you will walk off of that boat, such a better angler than really? you walked on it. I highly recommend go on the Yankee cap for three or four days, yeah. go on the American Patriot for three or four days. Cause when you get off that boat, you're going to learn so much from either your mistakes or just the other anglers teaching you on the boat. And if you go, if you really want to dig into slow pitch jigging, this is what I recommend. Go on that boat and leave the bait at home. Really? Right? Do it. Just do it. Right? If, if you've already, if you've already, you know, accomplished what you want to accomplish on yeah. bait over the years, go there and leave the bait at home. When, yeah. you, when you walk off the boat, I, I promise you, you will be confident in your slow pitch okay. jigging. But for a guy locally who's not not looking to do the long range stuff, um, you know, there's there's obviously um, head boats that you can go out on. A lot of them are jigging friendly. Um, you can go out there and start with start with start with the gear you have. You don't have to go out and break the bank yeah. and and buy gear right off right off the rip. Get the jig, you know, get get a few jigs, get a selection of jigs so you can cover the water column mm -hmm. um, and some hooks, and just play around with it for a little bit. If you like it then move on to the gear. It's going to be better for you. So right. I see guys do it with spinners. I've seen guys, you know, do it. Really? With, you could, yeah. In micro chicking is, is a totally spinner game, but, yeah. but I can tell you that slow pitch really is, is, um, um, a conventional game. Yeah, definitely. But, but get out there, move the jig around. As long as you're moving the jig, letting the jig go up yeah. and falling, you got a chance. Right. You got a right. chance, you know, and you'll get better and you'll get better and you'll get better. You know, I, I can tell you that, you know, after you get a little bit of skill set to it, you know, you'll start catching more fish. Sure. It happens. That's awesome, man. Uh, well, that's awesome, man. I really appreciate you coming down here today. We're down in Miami, guys. We're at the new studio, by the way. But you guys got to go check out Johnny Jigs up in Pompano. They got everything that you guys need. Slow pitch jigging. If you want to do it, you guys got to hit up Johnny and go check him out at Johnny Jigs TV on YouTube, guys. Thanks, Johnny. I appreciate thank you. you coming yeah, out. thank you. Appreciate, appreciate it. Yeah, for sure. Absolutely. All right. Hope I didn't talk too much. No. It was awesome. <laughs> Thanks for joining us on CCO's The Science of Fishing. We hope that this episode was helpful and you learned something for the next time you're wetting a line. Before we cast off, a special thanks to our sponsors, Gulfstream Lures, Tackle Crafters, and Black Reef Spear Fishing. Your support helps us deliver insightful content to our listeners. Don't forget, we're available on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, YouTube, and all the major platforms. So wherever you listen to your favorite shows, we're there. Stay hooked by following us on social media at Science of Fishing and hitting the subscribe button. And if you know someone who'd enjoy this, don't hesitate to share. Until we meet again, catch them up.